Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutt of HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Tuesday, August 14th, 2018. In the Atlantic, it's the same old song and dance here as we don't have much of anything to discuss. This one area up here in the subtropical Atlantic and 40% chance of development associated with it. You can see the tail on this. It's not purely tropical. Got that comma shape. Uh, there is some decent convection associated with it, so it might eventually get named, but it's not completely dissimilar from this upper level system here and this cyclone here. You know, let me look at that. They're all, you know, this one's out over the ocean where the water temperatures are, you know, close to 80 degrees or so, and these are over land, and so they're similar for the most part. That's why it's not a purely tropical system. Uh, and then you notice too in this particular shot, and we will look at an animation in a moment, but the intertropical convergence zone down here, squashed, not much convection at all, and this is going to continue for the next several days. Um, before we get to that, I want to look at the eastern Pacific. Out here we do have the potential for another uh, system to form right here and head off to the west with time. And at the end, uh, close to the end of everything here, I'll take a look at the GFS forecast for this region. Uh, farther to the east, more activity may be brewing over time as this area stays unsettled with lower pressures overall, more convective activity. It's just amazing how Central America in, and Mexico uh, are the dividing lines between activity and no activity. It's, you know, what if there was no Central America or Mexico and everything was just connect, uh, disconnected or, you know, joined together the two basins here? It's just weird how that works, isn't it? I think so. Anyhow, looking at the, uh, and this is another good example of it. I mean, look, here's your landmass separating the Atlantic Basin over here. And this is all what's called the North Atlantic Basin. Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean Sea is part of that. And very limited convection all out in here. But then, you know, for whatever reason, in the Southeast Pacific, you know, it's just strange. Nevertheless, good news for those, again, like I said yesterday, heading down to the beaches. Water temperature is nice and warm all across the basin, even up into the northern parts, you know, not too shabby. Uh, water temperature is off of... Cape May, New Jersey, right around 80 degrees Fahrenheit in the surf, uh, upper 70s uh, off of Long Island, and not too bad either for the Gulf of Maine, considering how cold it is up there typically. We also see in this animation the uh, convection blowing up with this system here, which is technically Invest 98L, uh, but it's interesting. You can see some of this energy getting sort of pumped into it, not purely tropical and nothing purely tropical coming off Africa and surviving right now. We're still in this sinking pattern where the air is, it's hard to do 3D here, but the air is sinking all throughout this region. And when it sinks, it compresses, it warms, it dries out. And none of that is favorable for development. For those of you that track and watch the evolution of tornadoes, in the Great Plains of the United States during the severe weather season, you know that warm air above the surface, you know, mid-levels of the atmosphere, puts a cap on things. Remember the movie Twister? And they talk about the cap's going to break. When is the cap going to break? I think they said that. Surely that has to be in the script. I've seen the movie many times. I, you think I would know for sure. But that is definitely a thing, the cap breaking, and it's not doing so throughout this region there is a strong cap limiting convection for the most part and there are signs though that that will change and I will show you that at the very end today in the eastern Pacific a visual representation and I'm never going to go without mentioning this it's always tropicaltidbits.com well not always but I always want to mention it you know just in case this is the first time you've seen one of my videos and you're like where'd that animation come this is come from this is from my Levi Cowan's website, Tropical Tidbits. Sometimes I use the weathernerds.org. But anyhow, I want to give credit where credit is due. A little bit of thunderstorm activity over Central America, Costa Rica, Panama area, a little bit right off the coast of Mexico. But this is the area that may develop and head off into the open Pacific. Nothing really looks too strong over the next few days as well. 
And it's interesting because the equatorial Pacific down here, uh, closer to you know the equator, is uh, running colder than normal sea surface temperature-wise. And we'll look at that in more detail on Thursday as we take the bi-weekly look at temperatures, both actual and departures from normal. All right, so here's a quick look at the next five days in the Pacific. To get your bearings, here's the west coast of the U.S., the Baja Peninsula, Mexico proper down to Central America. Here's the other side in the Gulf of Mexico in vicinity. Now that you know your geography, are there anything? Are there anything? That's not how you say it. Is there anything that sticks out? There's a few areas. You can see there's areas of vorticity here. These are the blobs that I look for. There's one off of California, the remnants of a tropical cyclone. What is that, John or Christy? The leftovers, there's something trying to head towards Hawaii. But you notice, nothing looks very mean, so to speak. Nothing very angry looking, where you're like, wow, look at that. And you've seen it before, you know what I'm talking about. And it's not showing up. So I think over the next week or two, 10 to 14 days, right? This area will start to wane, and the sinking motion will move in, and the rising motion will move over to the Atlantic Basin. Why do I think that? Because there are people that track this kind of stuff uh, that tell me these things. And one of those people is Ben Knoll, and he is from New Zealand, and uh, he tracks this stuff for a living. He is a meteorologist, and I like this. This is what he, you know, when you get a consensus uh, and a group of people together that know what they're talking about, then it really helps. I call it crowdsourcing um, information or discovery or whatever. And with all of the BS news and information that exists on the Internet, the one good thing about Twitter is you can select those who tell you the truth and just tell it like it is. They don't have an agenda. They don't have a dog in the fight, so to speak. And people like Ben Knoll are one of those people, and I like it because I can trust the information. It's non-biased. Here it is, and it shows that over the next uh, little while, let's just scroll back up. Um, this is updated yesterday, that a major change here in the tropical Bay State looks likely during September, the peak time for Atlantic hurricane activity. And uh, the pattern looks to become more favorable for Atlantic tropical cyclones by mid-month after the suppressed wave fades during the first 10 days. So what on earth are we looking at here? Let's see if I can expand this and do my best to explain it. All right, so the simplest way to understand this, here we are right now. This is the present for the most part, all right? And as you go down the graphic, that's the future. See these dates over here? That's what that represents. And this is showing us the vertical velocity, uh, the potential in the vertical for rising motion or sinking motion. And in this situation, all of this green through here is favorable rising motion in the atmosphere. Where? Where is that? Okay, so here's all the favorable stuff here. And it's going to be that way for the next several days through the 16th of August. And that exists spatially on a map uh, roughly through here. Okay, you see that? And sinking exists in the western, I'm sorry, the eastern Atlantic right now, which is over here. So you're just matching these up. This corresponds to that. This corresponds to this area roughly. And then you just kind of scroll it up, if you will. I wish I could. I wish it was on a wheel so I could show you. You know, as you move forward in time, you go out and eventually, and it looks like really unfavorable coming up at the end of August. I might just take a vacation during this time span, but where would I go? Uh, maybe, maybe the desert southwest for some monsoon action. I mean, dude, that is really suppressed. But look what happens here. As Ben talks about, after the first few days of September, green starts to take up a good deal of the Atlantic Basin and an increasing, um, oh, how would you explain this? Intensity, there you go. More and more lifting starting to take place for the Atlantic Basin. And so as we get towards the peak of the hurricane season here in September, sinking starts to set in for the areas that are busy now. Rising motion starts to set up 
for the areas that are dead right now. And this has been very consistently shown throughout the last couple of weeks. And uh, Ben has talked about that in his tweets. And in fact, I think I can show you that. Is it part of the thread or did he start a new one? Yep, yep. See, he's been talking about this all the way back to the 30th of July. And there it is as, as it progresses, you know, and it's even stronger a signal now. So, quiet for the next couple of weeks in the Atlantic. Great news, but I feel it that something is going to break loose in September. It only makes sense. It's not like we're in a strong El Nino, and it's just going to completely overwhelm the pattern. In fact, the Pacific Equatorial Region is cooling. The El Nino is failing to materialize right now, etc. The atmosphere is going to change. Um, I just hope folks are not lured into, you know, well, it's not happening at all, so whatever. You know, uh, make sure you don't just turn away from it is what I'm saying because I feel like September could be very busy and it could be one of those years where they say it only takes one and you think about all the rain we've had in the east. I know some people don't like me speculating, but you can't ignore the fact that we've had a very wet east coast and if you brought a tropical cyclone up into there, only even just a storm, doesn't even have to be a hurricane, that could really exacerbate the problem. So just don't ignore it. That's all I'm getting at. Um, I think I'm done. All right. So quiet now, busy later. That's the takeaway. Have a good rest of your Tuesday. As always, thanks for tuning in. I much appreciate your time and attention. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.